Hello and welcome to episode 5 of This Week in Linux. Today is Thursday, January 14th, 2010. According to Microsoft, they're planning to release a starter edition of Office 2010 that's a reduced functionality, ad-supported version. Yes, because Microsoft doesn't already have enough money, they need to release a broken version of their already awful software that pays them every time that you run it, in the hopes that you'll run out to the store, give them even more money for a product key card that unlocks the software. Wait, so they're providing a full install of all the versions of Office 2010 gimping it and then forcing you to go buy an eco-friendly package that actually makes the software usable? And in addition to that, the starter edition only comes with Word and Excel, so even if you're okay with the idea of ad-supported broken software, you don't even get all the programs to use. This is a bunch of horse crap in my opinion. Thanks but no thanks, I'll be sticking to open office. If you've ever used a digital SLR camera and you've made a mistake on a really important shot, such as setting the exposure wrong, setting the white balance wrong, anything like that, you know how important it is to be able to take those raw files and put them into a raw converter and do some post-processing on them. Well, one such raw converter just got a little bit better. Raw Therapy 3.0 Alpha 1 has been released, and it's got a bunch of great new features and a roadmap that's got a lot more. But the best new feature that I see in it is the new license. That's right, Raw Therapy is now GPL, and, and the code of, is available to the community. So what does all that technical crap mean to us? Well, basically, that just means instead of one guy writing the entire application by himself and getting chewed out by the community at large for slacking on it, more people can help out in the development process, the bug fixing, and the interface creation. It also means that if someone has another app that wants to add raw processing to it, they can use this code, which is already very mature and very stable. Final Story Tonight has to do with OpenShot Video Editor releasing their 1.0 version. Now, I've tried OpenShot before, and I thought it was a little bit buggy, but it was pretty decent. Hopefully all the bugs that I've dealt with will be taken care of with version 1.0. It released just a few days ago. There's a bunch of new features, a bunch of updates, but to sum it all up, there's some new stuff, there's some improved stuff, and some stuff's more stable. What the crap are you talking about? Fine, I'll be more specific. There are new transitions, there are new titles, there are new themes, and more stability, there's more accuracy, transitions now snap to the nearest clip, and tons of bugs have been fixed. To be honest, even though I used it before, my biggest gripe wasn't any of those things that I just mentioned. It was the, the number of steps you have to go through to add effects to your videos. For example, if I wanted to add chroma key to a clip, to just one clip, and if you're doing anything with chroma key, you normally have to use a lot of clips that each one has to be keyed. You have to right click on a clip, you go down to the properties, you find the effects tab, you select the effect, you add it, you configure it. That, that's like 17 steps. Wow, that's a ton of steps for one little thing. Yeah, I know, and imagine having to do it to every clip that you want to make an effect change to. In most other nonlinear video editors I've seen, there's a box with a list of all the avail available effects. You just click one, you drag it down, and you're ready to configure it. You don't have to go into properties boxes, you don't have to go into any sort of background windows, you just drag it and you're done. I'm not going to say that it's a terrible editor or anything, because it looks sweet. The new themes that they provide are really sweet looking. Uh, any, any sort of improvements as far as transitions and, and more available effects are great. But I could see taking that background properties window and moving it to the front, making it a little more available. Because as it stands now, it's more of a, let's take our home clips, throw them all into one place and hit render and you're done. That's great for simple, but if you want to go any, anywhere beyond the entry level home user, it has to have things a little more accessible. Anyway, they've got a live DVD available on their website, so you can try it out without changing your system. They've also got pre-compiled versions for Ubuntu and Fedora on their website, openshotvideo.com. Well, that's all for this episode of This Week in Linux. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. What the crap are you talking about?